As you all know, the violin is a string instrument, and unlike its fellow string instrument, the guitar, you can use a bow to produce sound instead of plucking or strumming it. There are four strings of the violin, G, D, A, and E. When these strings vibrate, they create something called a harmonic. Harmonics are patterns that are created within the instruments at specific frequencies of vibrations, creating the sounds. There are many different harmonics. Here are some. The first harmonic is also known as the fundamental frequency. It is the original harmonic that the rest of the harmonics are based off of. The harmonics are created by changing the frequency of the first, as you can see in the second and third harmonics. These different harmonic frequencies are related to each other by simple whole number ratios. In the picture, you can see that the second harmonic is half of the first, the fourth is the fourth of the first, and the sixth is the sixth of the first, and so on and so forth. This is a pattern that creates a sinusoidal function, as you can see here. You can also calculate the fundamental frequency by using this formula right here. And like all math calculation, frequencies also has a unit, hertz. As we said, there are four strings on the violin. They each have the same length, but different mass and tension. Therefore, each string has a different vibration. G has 196 hertz, D has 293.66 hertz, A has 440 hertz, and E has 659.26 hertz. So why is it so difficult to play it in the first place? <laughs> so there's this guy, right? He was a physicist in the 1800s. Hermann von Hemholtz. He actually studied how the violin strings vibrates. According to his research, to the naked eye, the string may appear to move in a parabola-like shape, as you can see on the left. However, Hemholtz discovered that the string actually moves in a V shape, as you can see on the right. The only reason we see a parabola shape is because the sharp corner moves along a curve, camouflaging itself. This is called the Hemholtz motion. The vertex of that little corner in the image is called the Hemholtz corner. Yup, the name L after the science guy. Each time the corner passes the bow, it triggers a transition between two frictions, sticking and sliding. When the corner travels from the bow to finger and back, the string sticks to the bow and drags along with it, and then it slips as the corner travels to the bridge and back. The force of the bow is very important. If you do not press hard enough, the string may vibrate in a motion shown here, instead of the Hemholtz motion, which produces a beautiful sound. As you can see, there are two corners traveling on the string and two episodes of slipping per cycle of the vibration. It will result as the same pitch as the Hemholtz motion, but with a different wavelength and a different sound. The pitch is how loud it is if you guys didn't know already. This is the minimum acceptable level of bow force. Most violinists will say that it doesn't make a great sound. There is also a maximum acceptable bow force too. If you press too hard with the bow, instead of a beautiful musical note, it will produce this nasty gaunch noise, as you can hear right here. All right. So do you guys have any questions? <laughs>